Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and we've been talking about the evolutionary biology. In the last video we've discussed about uh, the origin of life and how exactly uh, the evolution of life begin in the first place. Now in this video we are going to talk about the evidences of evolution because this is a very fair question that if evolution works then what are the evidences because when Charles Darwin provided us the idea of evolution he stated uh, the, the few few uh, observations of his because he found out different observations earlier and he tried to connect with all the observations and came up with a theory but now for this many years scientists have been researching on this idea and they are finding out many new informations and all those informations that are backing and proving the theory of evolution right. So what are those evidences? There are many evidences although but here today we want to talk about few major strong evidences of evolution. So let's talk about it. So the evidences of evolution can be divided into you know two three different levels of evidences we can we can talk about. We can talk about a uh, morphological which uh, let's say morphological evidences which we can visualize from outside and we can easily say that yes uh, we can compare. So we also call it comparative comparative anatomy. This is one thing. And the second type of evidence uh, that we have are molecular evidences. Molecular evidence. And the third type of evidence we have are, you know, archaeological. Archaeological evidence. So we have morphological evidence, molecular evidence and archaeological evidence. These are the major three very strong uh, evidences that we have. Now in the morphological evidences which is also known as comparative anatomy that proves uh, the tracing back of the organisms or modern species to their ancestor. Because first of all what was evolution, what, what evolution actually is and what evolution states. The idea of evolution if we explain in a very simple terms is that let's say human and chimpanzees. Because you know uh, I've been asked this question many a times that if chimpanzees are, uh, are like we both share similar characteristics and uh, we are evolving. So why not chimpanzees are converted to humans? This is a very common question that creationists ask the biologists all the time. But you need to understand the difference between how exactly the evolution works and uh, the, the generation of new species. So this is chimp and this is human. Now these are two separate species. Okay, Human is a different species, chimpanzees are different species. So chimpanzees will never come back convert to human. Why? Because evolution never works that way. Evolution works in a way that human and chimpanzee shares a common ancestor. A common ancestor is present from that common ancestor. One branched out and producing chimpanzee. The other one branched out and produced human. So that common ancestor has similarities and if you com compare human with that common ancestor you will find many similarities. If you compare chimpanzee with common ancestor you will also find many similarities. Now if you compare between chimpanzee and human you will also find many similarities uh, both morphological as well as anatomical as well as molecular but not exactly the same because earlier people thought that uh, you know there are many differences by looking at the morphology but if you look at molecular evidences between chimpanzee and human they are very very similar it's technically more than 98 percent similar if we compare the total genotype and if you if you look at all the genes that are present in the human as well as chimp you'll find it 98 percent more than that similarity between chimpanzee and human now that's the reason chimpanzee will never convert to human so chimpanzee will evolve in a different line it will produce something else more complex forms and that will remain chimpanzee or you can name that separately afterwards humans are also evolving in a separate line so it will not cross this uh, line from chimpanzee to human or from human to chimpanzee not possible okay now let's come back to the idea of evolution and evidences of evolution 
So evolution works this way. So to explain evolution, what we need to know, we need to look for different species and then we trace back to find their common ancestor. Now, this idea helps us to find out uh, whether evolution actually occurred or not. Because if this is wrong, if this idea is wrong, the evolution idea was wrong, then you will not find any similarity between the ancestor and the human or the ancestor and the chimpanzee. But it's not actually the case. So when we talk about comparative anatomy, comparative anatomy means we look for different species, different organisms, and we're trying to find out uh, different anatomical portions of their body. We need to compare those anatomy of those regions. For example, let's talk about uh, birds, okay? Let's talk about bat, let's talk about uh, whale, okay? So bird, bat, and whale, as well as let's say human, four different species four different organisms totally separate from each other so what we can see that the birds they have their four uh, like like the hands of the birds but that is generally for flying so let me write out uh, this four thing we have a bird we have a bat we have a whale and we have human so although whale and human they belong to mammals and bat uh, is also mammal but bird is is a totally separate type but still, if you compare them, and if you compare their hand, that same hand, the, the, the first, the hands that we have, let's say human, we have the hand, that same hand for the birds converted to wing, wing for their flying. The same hand for the bat is also uh, kind of attached with very thin skin, right? So that's also a kind of wing structure. For well, it's a flipper. So the same, if we look at that hand anatomy, if you look at their bone structure, you will find out that for all of us, bird, bat, whale and human, the structure is the same. That means, you know, the number of bones that are present and their names are all the same. Okay, humerus, radius, ulna, okay, all these bones that are linked to one another, they are the same. The number of the bones are the same. Although, uh, the length of uh, one part of the bone may be varying between a human and a whale. It may be varying between a bird and a human. That may be possibility. But the number of bones and the position, sequential position of the bones are the same. So why this thing is the same? Although bird is uh, using that hand as a wing to fly, bat is also using it to fly. While whale is using that same anatomy to swim and humans use that same anatomy for doing multiple tasks at once. Now why such difference? Because we can see the difference in function but why such similarity in anatomy? So this comparative anatomy study tells us that because all of them, the only way to explain it, the all of these individuals they have a very common ancestor that is the only way to explain the comparative anatomy that the same anatomical structure of bones that they share together. So this is uh, the comparative anatomy proof and this idea also states as the important insight which is also known as the homologous organs. Homo means same or similar. So homologous means uh, organs which are structurally similar okay, but functionally different. For example, we can see the wing of the bird, the flipper of the well, hand of human. Same thing, the uh, morphologically they are similar, anatomically, morphologically little different, but anatomically they are similar, but functionally they are different, okay. So they are known as homologous structures, remember that. And when we talk about homologous structures, we talk about the pattern of evolution, which is known as divergent evolution. So what is divergent? So let's assume this is the common ancestor. From this ancestor, all these other species that we can see now, they are diverged. So diverging means from a point, the individuals are going and they're separated uh, from each other from the point. If we go away from the point, they're separated. So it's diverging. We call them divergent evolution. Divergent evolution. And uh, the example and proof of divergent evolution is this homologous homologous structures okay 
Now similarly, we can also find out uh, structures which are morphologically different but functionally the same. Okay? That means, you know, example, uh, again let's take whale as an example uh, as well as let's take a shark. So, a whale and a shark, both of them, they have this kind of flipper. So, that, that kind of flipper helps them to swim, right, to maintain their balance and to swim through the aquatic environment. But, if we look at the morphology between the flipper of the whale and the morphology between the flipper of the shark, you will see a difference. They are not the same. So, those structures, their functions are similar because both the shark and the whale has a purpose in there uh, to have a flipper. That purpose is to swim, right? So, they are going towards the same function. So, it's something like converging, right? Diverge means going away from a point, converging, coming towards a point. So, this is convergent evolution. Convergent evolution and the example of convergent evolution are organs which are structurally different but functionally similar. And the example they are known as analogous analogous structures of the body okay so these are the different types of evolution that we see and comparative anatomy helps us to find out their ancestry and we can tell that yes somehow uh, those organisms are linked to one another okay that's one thing so this is first one done second one molecular evidences now what are those molecular evidences molecular evidences means obviously when we are looking at uh, the genetic material that is a molecular evidence when we look at the cell membrane composition that is a molecular evidence so now if we compare mammals if you compare mammals and many different mammals you will find in all those mammals the cell membrane composition is very much similar okay as well as if you look at the genetic material that is the biggest proof as a molecular evidence because the dna for example, I told you, if you compare the DNA of chimpanzee and human, you will find remarkable similarity over 984 and 98.5% similarity between humans and chimpanzee. So, even human and a rat had similarity in near about 88 to 90%. So, only a difference of 2-3% results in so much difference in, uh, in their uh, overall appearance for that organism. But we cannot understand that by looking at the morphology, by looking at the anatomy always. We need to rely on molecular evidences and there are thousands and thousands of molecular evidences that's going to prove that yes, somewhere all the organisms that are living nowadays are connected to a common ancestor. In fact, you know, you take a bacteria which is very tiny. You take an organism like human which is the most developed type of a eukaryotic organism now so that developed eukaryotic organism and some other very small tiny organism like archaea they are known as archaea which grow in the very 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 dangerous environments like you know uh, hydrothermal vents you know where living is very difficult so you take those archaea you take the bacteria you take human and all of us share a common ancestor and that common ancestor is known as last universal common ancestor or Luca. So, Luca uh, was there at the very beginning. Remember, Luca, from Luca, uh, it branched to produce different organisms. It branched to produce bacteria, then it branched to produce archaea, then it branched to produce eukarya at the end. Actually, uh, it's supposed to be, this is supposed to be the bacteria from the branching. This is archaea and this is eukarya, something like that. So, last universal common ancestor and then slowly you can see bacteria, archaea, eukarya, they are all uh, are linked in terms of uh, many molecular evidences. You can only explain this with molecular evidence but because if you look at the appearance of a bacteria and, and a human, there is no way any similarity is found but in molecular evidence you will find similarities between them. In the molecular evidence you will also find similarity between archaea and eukarya. Okay? So, that's why molecular evidences as always are a good thing to understand when we are comparing uh, organisms with one another. Archaeological evidences. Archaeological evidences are uh, everywhere and these are the some evidences which are you know real evidences because you know molecular evidences are also real, morphological is also real but archaeological evidences help us to connect the dots because evolution and the origin of life is just like a jigsaw puzzle and we have different fragments of the puzzle we need to add them together 
place them together and archaeological evidences help us to do that because what we can see in archaeological evidence is that different organisms and their their structures in real life because you know we need fossils as a proof right here in arch archaeological evidences you will see fossils and the fossils uh, which are formed due to the mineralization of the soil converted into the rock and the living organism trapped uh, between those soil and rock they form uh, they remain kind of the structure of the body kind of remains the same and sometimes even in the very cold environments they are trapped in in such a way that their genetic elements somehow may be present or most of the time they are not present they are destroyed but uh, the the rock can help us to determine their age means because you know the rock carries naturally occurring minerals and uh, other inorganic components now those inorganic components they are also radioactive so this radioactivity can be measured to to finally calculate uh, the the age of the rock with the process known as radiocarbon dating now with the help of this radiocarbon dating we can get the age of the rock that is help us to that is helping us to find out uh, what was there earlier like what was the very uh, early uh, life form and how was it look like at the very early time we can find this one out because now evolution means not only telling you that uh, the organism a comes then organism b then c we also need to talk about the time frame where they come that is very very important because evolution always works with the time so we need to say this organism a was present 300 million years ago and even 400 million years ago there is there was another organism newly discovered so these things are possible with the help of archaeological evidences and you know another thing is that evolution start taking place and conversion of one type of life form into another type of life form for example uh, all the birds are actually the the birds are uh, the preceders you know and we can say the ancestors for the birds are all those uh, dinosaurs because you know the dinosaurs were there and they are present for a long time this is not this is this is all truth but how we know that after the dinosaurs are gone what are their uh, next version and the next version are the birds whatever birds you will see they are actually the next version of the dinosaurs after the dinosaurs are gone there is a link between uh, the reptiles and then birds so the evolution scheme states one after one evolution and the pattern says birds are originated right after uh, the reptiles so if birds are originated right after the reptiles then definitely there should be some similarities between a bird and a reptile so it's very important to find out an organism which shares the characteristics of both the bird as well as share the characteristics of the reptile but it is very very difficult to find because nowadays you cannot find any bird that carry both because we know birds all of them they have the feather and we know reptiles they have scales in their back and also reptiles have uh, have teeth birds don't have that so many differences are there but we found out an organism we found out a living creature who had the similarity between the bird as well as the similarity with the reptiles and that is very very important those organisms are known as the missing links okay because they are connecting the dot between one type of organism and another type of organism in between that missing link for uh, converting of the birds into the uh, like reptiles into the birds the example for such are known as archaeopteryx so archaeopteryx is a bird uh, which help us to find out the information that the birds are prepared from uh, reptiles why because Ar archaeopteryx has wings and archaeopteryx also have teeth it has jaw which is present in reptiles archaeopteryx also have uh, you know nails in their uh, fingers so that is another interesting thing which is a fact of reptile archaeopteryx has feathers in part of their wings that is a feature of the bird so you can see that archaeopteryx shares the common feature of both birds as well as reptiles that will help us to find out the missing link between uh, the evolution from the reptiles to the birds the same way there are different missing links are available that can help us to uh, complete the jigsaw puzzle uh, and go one step closer to explain the overall idea of evolution 
So that's why these archaeological evidences are very important because researchers uh, all across the globe, they travel all across the globe and they are finding out all those fossils and all those missing links that, has, that will help us to build uh, the idea uh, of the evolution and also support the idea of evolution. Okay, so that in a sense are the, the evidences of evolution and uh, you can rely on these multiple evidences to now call evolution as a fact because you know for this long years there is no theory disproving the idea of evolution. These all theories actually prove and make the evolution theory more concrete. Okay, so if you like this video please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to get more and more videos like that. And stay tuned because in the next videos I will discuss what evolution actually is. That is the mechanism of evolution. We'll talk about the Lamarckism, we'll talk about the Darwinism and then we'll also talk about uh, the different outcomes of evolution. Thank you.